Question, what is better than an Artillery Sidewinder X1? For me, it's easy to answer. It's two Sidewinder X1. And that's what we see here today. I just bought me a second one. It is used. It is sold as defect. And I'm going to find out step by step what is wrong with the printer and how to fix it. That's the video series starting today. Starting my series here today with the bed. Okay, so, and there is the first finding I discovered. This is a very simple construction here with the bed. Here are the four knobs to level the bed. And I just removed the heating bed, flipped it over so that I have enough space to work on further here. So you just remove the stopper there and then you can slide out the bed construction here. Here we have a nice collection of dust and hair and other stuff. So that's of course not good. Never oil or grease your V-slot or your ball bearings here because whatever oil you put on there it will just collect stuff and dust and this is not good because this goes in between the roller and the v-slot and your carriage will end up stuttering a little bit and that will be transferred of course to your printing surface Next, I will check the ball bearings here, and this one seems to be good. It turns very, very smooth, and oh, what's happening here? Oh, this one is not turning smooth, so this one is bad. I have to exchange it. Besides that, the construction is very simple here. You will find those rollers. Two of them here are fixed, and the upper ones are here with an eccentrical nut, and so you can <coughs> tighten them up. How many of those rollers do we need at all? Well, the factory delivered the carriage here with six rollers all together. I removed two of these rollers in the middle because it just don't make any sense to have six rollers under there. Because there is not so much weight on the bed that you would need six rollers to keep up with all the load there. Um, since each roller for itself has the potential to collect dust and to introduce any kind of wobbling here in the whole system. So the less rollers we use, the better it is for the whole system. But of course, it needs to be stable enough. It would actually be enough to use three rollers at all. Two on one side and on the upper side, just one roller to adjust against the other two. Uh, that, of course, would be very fine and would work uh, fantastic. But in this case here, if you take a look at the geometry of the whole chassis, if I would just use one, use one roller on one side, then uh, the lever here would be a little bit too long for this huge bed that this chassis here would have to carry. So that I decided, no, I use a symmetrical um, order here so that I have two rollers on each side. That's still fine to adjust. That's the minimum we need to uh, keep up with the whole movements here. So let's adjust the eccentric rollers against the other two. Okay, so what do we do? I first loosen one roller and that's done now. And I, if you, if you just saw it, I had a little play within it and so i just move the eccentric nut now against so that very very slightly it pushes against the other roller not too tight and no play but also not too tight it just must ride very very smoothly and that's what i do with the other i just loosen it and now i can feel very i can feel the play within there and now i tighten it back again just until I feel now the play is gone and it still moves very very easy very very smooth all 
all done with that, I will take off the slider here again and I will tighten the nuts from the eccentric rollers here because I loosened them a little bit before so I have a better feeling while tightening them. And having the chassis back on the rails here, I check everything again. One roller I had to remove, I'm going to show you here in a close up. You see, you see, there is this little irritation here. There is this little defect on the surface of the roller, just where it rolls within the V slot from the aluminium rail. And that's enough. That little scratch here is enough so that you will feel it while moving the bed. When you feel it, well, the whole system is feeling it as well. And that means that chances are you will see that within the surface of your print. And that's what we don't want. So better remove and exchange the roller. That's what I did here. And you see even this little sparkling there of aluminium that also can cause um, this little stuttering while sliding the bed chassis. Just be very careful because all these rollers, they are so cheap. Yeah, I think you can buy 10 rollers for about $10. And uh, this is so cheap concerning that there are two ball bearings also inside. So don't mess around with only any old stuff here. Just exchange it, have a good feeling and have a nice bed. How about polycarbonate rolls? Some folks, they plead for upgrading your rollers. Get rid of these simple, cheap POM rollers, the black ones I show here, and upgrade to these beautiful polycarbonate ones. Well, it is advertised as being much harder. And, uh, well, I can confirm that. Here's a little piece of polycarbonate. And this is very brittle. Now we come to an interesting question. I mean, do we really need any stronger material here? The extreme would be we use metal rollers. Think about it. Using metal rollers on an aluminium metal rail. That's probably not our best choice. If I had to line out all the materials in a row, it would be rubber of being soft, soft rubber, then hard rubber, followed by POM material, followed by polycarbonate, followed by steel. Okay, so our polycarbonate is um, concerning the hardness somewhere between POM and steel. But do we need that plus on hardness? I really don't think so. To my opinion, this POM material is the right one for our printer. It's a little bit forgiving and, that, and this is what we want. We want to have material that is a little bit absorbing, that is stiff enough to roll precise and repeatedly precise, but is also absorbing resonances and uh, dust that is maybe on the rail. So anything that is absorbing a little bit. That's a good opportunity now to check our belt. If there are not any twos or missing or other things. Okay, this one seems okay and is fine. Let's then put everything together again on the right side here. Just put the pulley over the stepper motor and reattach here the belt tensioning system. This is mechanically done much easier here on the Sidewinder X2 or Genius Pro since they have an inbuilt tensioning device already. This is here what I did the old fashion. I mean, it's easy to upgrade to any kind of 15 euro tensioning device, but I don't really need it that much. Here you can see how I do it. I just fasten the lower screw here at first. 
Don't fasten the first screw that much, just a little bit. And so that the rest of the part is still moving around a little bit. And what you see here, it's just printed very quickly right within Cura using the market place and parts for calibration. I put a cube um, on the Cura build plate dimensions uh, 142 millimeters long, five millimeters wide and six millimeters of height. Right within Cura, as I said, I just print it. And I have this little device here now, and it's very easy to go in between with a screwdriver, whatever you have available. And so you can tension the belt very easy and comfortable. You don't need to tension the belt too much. It just shouldn't be loose, but also not too tight because that will introduce or may introduce resonances again on the system. Resonances coming from the stepper motor, for example. Okay, so we are all done for now here with preparing our bed chassis. How about upgrading to linear rails? Searching online, I found this offer here. Obviously, this is one linear rail and with one slider coming with it and a mounting plate. So this is fit, this fits right the Sidewinder X1 here. Also would be the same for the Sidewinder X2. And this kind is also available for the Genius. So this will cost about 55 euros here. Let's see how it looks like mounted. So here we see the slider, here the rail, the slider and the carriage. Well, very simple construction. This little slider here in between sliding back and forth on the linear rail is made and comes with ball bearings. So there are little metal ball bearings inbuilt here. And that makes us precise and taking a lot of load. The little ball bearing slider here in the middle, of course, has to move back and forth with as little as possible resistance. Very smooth. That what this device is designed for and keeping it up with a lot of load. Here in our instance, we don't have a lot of load while well, we travel back and forth, but we have a big lever here concerning the big bed and the central position of this. And of course, this little ball bearing slider here is designed with also a little bit of play so that it goes smooth. And exactly that play is not very suited for our design here because a little bit of play there in the center will be a lot more of play here concerning the corners of the bed. And that's why I don't think this, this design with one rail underneath the bed is a very good one. It's a difference. Uh, in case you decide to buy two of those rails, well, put um, two of them on each side um, on the corners of the bed, mount them differently and use uh, maybe three or four of these sliders and then you will have a precise bed carrier underneath and that will work. But also think about the maintenance because those sliders here, they want to have a little bit of oil or grease on the linear rail. And in our case, well, we don't want to have that because any oil, any grease will just collect dust. Well, those little sliders, they have a little bit of a lip um, on the front and on the end, so they will keep up with dust and, uh, you know, move them away right in front of them. But that's not a very good situation at all. Upgrading to such linear rails on the extruder axis or the Z axis could be a whole different story since we have that natural gravity reducing the play there. Okay, but that's not what I have 
talked about here today. My personal conclusion is that I would need no upgrade whatsoever, no polycarbonate rollers, no linear rails, because the POM is the almost perfect material for the rollers. I just have to keep them clean, I have to see that everything is in order and I can print great.